Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the Exxon is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. The X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to this edition of the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Ham, in, not in Hamilton anymore. We are in Crystal Beach, Ontario, on the shores of Lake Erie. If you would like to uh, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, to find out about the programming we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network. Visit www.xzbn.net. And for the um, all the different shows we have available for you on the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, visit simultv.com. The headline read as follows, Texas oil worker escapes abduction by UFO and has pictures to prove it. A Texas oil worker escaped the clutches of an alleged alien abduction and has pictures showing the extraterrestrial with an alarmingly large horn in, on its forehead, which may or may not double as an anal probe. Ronnie Dawson, an oil worker driver, said, The thing came right in front of me from outer space and flew right over me. He continues to say, I was standing on top of these petrol tanks and taking photographs. I hid between the tanks because it scared the hell out of me. Sadly, as is so often in the case... Randy Dawson seemed only to have a really low-resolution flip phone camera with him, so the pictures are a little blurred. Joining me now to tell us more about this amazing story from Texas is Ronnie Dawson. Ronnie, welcome to the Exxon. 
Oh, thank you, Rob. Uh, Ronnie, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I'm a I'm a Texas oil field worker. I, I live down here in North Central Texas. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's about 80 miles west of uh, Fort Worth, right on the I-20. We're in the northern hill country here. And, uh, and, and as an oil field worker, what I do is I drive a crude oil transport truck, about $250,000 worth of equipment in uh, some of the most rural backcountry places you could ever imagine and in the places you wouldn't want to take a Jeep sometimes really? hmm. without tearing it up. And, uh, and, I, and I transport these loads of crude oil from these, these oil leases uh, to the pipeline facility where we put it in the pipeline and it goes to the refineries and stuff for processing. Now, have you always been a believer in UFOs, extraterrestrials, and uh, visitation as well as alien abductions? You know, quite honestly, I was quite a, I was kind of a skeptic, really, because uh, you know mm-hmm. I work out here in the middle of nowhere, Texas, at night, all night long, right. and uh, for for twenty five, thirty years, I haven't seen anything. I hadn't seen anything. You know, I'd heard of the stories, I wanted to believe it, I was interested in it, but I just had never had seen anything. And we're the kind of guys that are out there that should be encountering this kind of stuff. So that always that added to my skepticism, actually. Tell us about the night, the night that you had your encounter, your first encounter. Well, the, the first encounter was uh, I was uh, cruising uh, south of Cisco, Texas, out there, and we'd been seeing some weird lights over the trees that would come mm-hmm. on and then go off without any explanation. They'd been puzzling us. You know, I was just kind of curious as to what in the world that could be. But this night, there was like, there was. Six lights came on. Then there was nine lights that stretched stretched across the sky and the road in front of me. And I seen that, and it was large, illuminating areas of light, not like intensely bright beams from a spotlight or anything like that, way up in the air. And I couldn't imagine what it was. And I was cruising down the highway, and uh, and I was just heading right at this thing in the middle of the night. And, and three of the lights broke off and traveled to a field about a quarter mile to my left. Out of my driver's side window, I was looking at all this. And mm-hmm. finally, I had it's like I had went underneath the craft, and I couldn't see the lights anymore that were above me. But I could see the lights that had traveled away over the field. And I looked out of my driver's side window out there, and about maybe a quarter mile out in the field, uh, there was a blue beam came down out of this craft and hit the ground. There was uh, some kind of a bobblehead-looking thing out there with a the fluorescent green light glowing around it. And all this happened very quickly. I mean, it moved from one area to another area within a minute. And and there was a blue beam shot down to the ground. And I was taking all this in, trying to figure out whether I should stop or just keep going. Or, and I was digging around looking for my accident camera I had in the truck to get some pictures. Mm-hmm. And, and taking all this in at the same time. And I looked in the, bu- the blue beam, and I seen something about 30 feet off the ground. And it was something darker in the blue beam. And as I focused my eyes on it, all of a sudden I seen it. It was a cow, and it was whipping its head from side to side. And uh, at that point, it, it just really hit me that my God, this is a, this got to be a UFO, and this is a cow getting abducted. And and I had no desire to stop at that point. So your first encounter was witnessing a cattle mutilation. Uh, cattle mutilation. Am I correct? Well, that was the most shocking thing I said. I don't know. I, I don't know if they put the cow back, if they hmm. did, if they killed the cow and left the remains. I have no idea what happened to the cow. All I know is I seen it 30 feet up in the air being sucked up into this blue beam and it was whipping its head from side to side. And, uh, and it, and it scared me and it, and it made me just really want to get the heck out of there. And I have no idea. I don't know if the cow died and I looked, I never seen no buzzards or anything around there. And we went and uh, we went back in the, the Japanese came down to do an episode on my sighting, and we stopped and we filmed around there and tried to talk to some people around there. And they'd mm-hmm. seen some lights, but they they didn't know anything about no cattle dying or anything like that. Okay, let, let me just let me quote something that you sent my producer. Um, he witnessed a cattle abduction firsthand, and he became aware that the lights were are from an alien origin. The lights seemed to always show themselves, especially when he was in rural locations. He convinced a friend to help him record the craft and perform a laser experiment to test the craft's propulsion system in regards to its bending the fabric of space. In the test, Dawson fired a 250-milliwatt green laser around and onto the craft's surface. His friend, being awestruck at the sight of the UFO, failed to record the historic event. When was that done? That was done in 2010, and I 
we'd been seeing the, the lights and mm-hmm. I'd seen the many of the craft and, and we were trying to, I was trying to think outside the box on something I could prove to the skeptics and scholars that were actually seeing something. And I was, my thinking was that if this thing is being in time and space, the, the laser beam would appear to be in. And if we could catch that on camera, we'd really have some solid evidence that these guys aren't from around here. And that was the whole idea behind this process. Okay, but, uh, you know, when you say that um, bend time and space, how did you come to that conclusion that this is what was happening and the propulsion and the appearance and disappearance of the craft had something to do with that? Well, you know, we'd just been, I'd been reading, doing some reading and stuff like that on, mm-hmm. on, uh, on people theorizing how their propulsion system right. would work. You know how how would they would get the, you know achieve the speed of light and stuff like that, and listen to Bob Lazar talk about how the craft moved and stuff like that. Mm. So we were just trying to come up with some kind of something that would prove that this, if this craft has been in sp- the space itself around the craft somehow, right. uh, then a laser beam shot at the craft would should appear to be in. That was our thinking. Now I never saw this. I didn't even if we would have had the camera to record it. I never saw that. I did shine the laser beam onto the craft itself to see if it would reflect the light, and it didn't. It just absorbed the beam. Okay, now what is a 250 milliwatt green laser, and where did you get it? Uh, it's like a classroom laser, so if it's oh, a little, it's more powerful than you'd want to uh, use in a classroom. It's just one of these handheld ones that that have the different color lights on it. The red, you can change the beam from red to yellow, I believe. Yeah, the, green, the green one, yeah. you can see the beam all the way. I mean, mm-hmm. you can see the beam travel oh. in a straight line for a, over a mile at that at that 250-milliwatt gotcha. stream. And anyway, the, the, the idea was we would catch the beam bending and have it recorded, and, mm-hmm. and, and we didn't get that pulled off. And, and I never did see the beam deviation, but uh, what was really interesting was what happened the next night. All right, apparently the next night the aliens paid you a visit. Yeah, they... Uh, <laughs> They uh, got up close and personal with me at my house here in Ranger, Texas. And I guess I was really asking for it, I guess. You know, you can't. But, but I noticed uh, when they, they they ransacked my house and, and kept me and froze me in my mm-hmm. bed. And, I mean, I had just laid down. It wasn't like I even had time to go to sleep. Right. And uh, what happened was as soon as I laid down, uh, stuff started breaking in the kitchen. And I thought my cat was the mischievous one. And I tried to get up to go see what he had gotten into. And I realized I was paralyzed and couldn't move. How do you think the aliens knew where you lived? I think they must have followed. They must have followed me home, mm-hmm. uh, and they had been watching me. And I know for a fact that they had been watching me because later on we caught we caught some video footage here at the house, and they kind of showed themselves. And uh, and in August August 2017, they actually made contact with me here at my house. So I know that they they're walking around my house, mm-hmm. and they're and where they're watching me from, you can't really detect them. They have a stealth that. Uh, They could be right beside you. You wouldn't even be able to see them. All right, Ronnie, we've got to take our first commercial break. But when we come back, let's talk about your first contact face-to-face with these ET visitors. ExoNation, my guest is Ronnie Dawson. You can find out more about Ronnie by going to Facebook and Googling his name or by putting his name in the search engine. Ronnie Dawson Experiencer. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com, on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV, and on the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV, simultv.com. It's hard to listen to the news without realizing we're living in volatile, unprecedented times. Yet never has there been such an opportunity to transform the human condition. As old structures fail, where can we find the guidance to co-create a better way? Find Your Path Home is an ever-evolving, leading-edge information, education, and healing resource center designed to support and guide you on your path to unity and enlightenment. Based on sound principles employed by shaman worldwide, we provide techniques that can support you through the current transitions. 
offering online shamanic classes, international long-distance shamanic healing sessions, complimentary Mission Evolution radio episodes and Stairway to Heaven TV vignettes, seminars, retreats, and much more. All of this can be found on findyourpathhome.com. So I was watching the X-Zone TV channel last night when I was abducted by aliens, and they kept repeating to me over and over again, Simultv.com, Simultv.com. What's Simultv.com? That's what I asked them. They had it written on the side of their UFO. How do you spell that? UFO. No, I mean Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Right. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Interesting that you were abducted by aliens in a Simultv.com UFO last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Now that you mention it, I remember now last night I was awakened from a deep sleep. My great-grandmother was standing there. She said she'd come from the hereafter to tell me about Simultv.com. She even spelled it out for me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com, Sonny Boy. Wow. Yeah. Guys, you'll never guess what my psychic guru just told me. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Exactly. Are you guys psychic too? Of course. We all know about Simultv.com. S-I-M-U-L-T-V.com. Shamanic healing is the key to personal empowerment. Why? All four levels of our being, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, must be addressed for us to enjoy balanced, healthy, abundant lives. Yet there are few provisions for spiritual or energetic healing. Shamanism, found at the root of all cultures, is a very effective spiritual healing modality. To find quality shamanic healing you can trust, regardless of where you live, look no further than find your Path Home Long Distance Shamanic Healing Program. All Path Home Long Distance Healing Practitioners have been trained and certified through Path Home Shamanic Art School. Change your life. Live abundantly. Schedule a long distance shamanic healing session with Gwilda Wiecka or one of her quality practitioners today at findyourpathhome.com. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. And if you'd like to find out more about my guest this hour, his name is Ronnie Dawson. And you can go to facebook.com forward slash Ronnie dash Dawson dash experience. And we're talking about Ronnie's experience with UFOs and ETs. Uh, Ronnie, once again, in the information you sent to my producer, uh, the next night the aliens paid uh, Ronnie a visit in his home in Ranger, Texas. They held him hostage while they ransacked his home until they reached the point where the laser was stored. Dawson was fully conscious but unable to move as he was held in place by some invisible force. He watched helplessly as three ETs he described as insects, insect-looking, ran above the house for the laser. A year later to the day, Dawson was approached at work. This time he managed to cast photos and video of the craft. The craft craft appeared and approached within 50 feet of Dawson and sent him into hiding. Why do you think the ETs would follow you, visit you the next night, just to get a small handheld laser? You know, yeah, I have no idea why why they did Okay. Uh, I think it maybe is. I thought it was maybe a retaliation for shining it on the craft, and and when I shined that thing on the craft, mm-hmm. I was really con- I was really worried that they were going to fire their back, and we'd be turned to ash right there on the spot. It was scary doing it, and uh, and the next night I, I had no idea that they were going to come sh- make appearance at my house, and uh, these little things run mm-hmm. about my house and scared me, and I had a cat in the house, and it scared him too, and he came and jumped on the bed with me. Was there anyone else in the house besides you and your cat? No, at that time, I just lived here by myself, and I I leave enough lights on my house that I can kind of see to move around and get Mm -hmm. up and get a drink, go to the bathroom. Now, um, was there damage done to your house? Every drawer and cabinet in the whole house was open uh, when the ordeal stopped. Wow. And, and, uh, I mean, everything was open, and some glasses had been knocked over. There was a lamp that had knocked over and broke. Uh, there was a, there was a few things broken, uh, just minor stuff, uh, but mainly they just opened every drawer in the whole house and went through it. But I didn't find anything missing, including the laser. It sounds as if it was a home invasion, for goodness sake. 
Yeah, it, you know, it, it, they they definitely invaded my mm-hmm. house, and, and the gun cabinet where the laser was being kept was locked, and right. they had managed to unlock it. They unlocked both parts of the gun cabinet, because I know it was locked, and, and I thought the laser would be gone, sure enough, when I, when I went in there and looked at it, and uh, it was in there. It was still in there, so I don't know if they found it, looked at it, or observed it, or they never did find it and give up or what. I don't know. Did you call the police? I wanted to call the police, but I'm a hazmat, a crew transport driver, and uh, I, I was sitting there asking myself, you know, what are the police going to think I'm on drugs or some kind of stuff like that? And it, <laughs> I, I finally just decided, well, I have no solid evidence that this actually happened, even though I really would have liked to call the police. And I think if I had it to do over again, mm-hmm. it may cost me my job, but I why? probably would have done it. But why, but why would it cost you your job, you know? If you had previous history with the police for drugs or alcohol, I can understand you being a little leery. But you know, why were you? Why did you hesitate? That would have been an excellent way of getting it on on paper that something had happened. Because now it's just your word that this happened, and if you had a police report, there would have been something to substantiate the claim that you know something or someone had invaded your home. Yeah, and I would have liked to have tried to get some physical evidence mm-hmm. of, of some of the places they had. I had seen them walking around and roaming around and stuff like that too. So you know, I, I wish I would have. Yeah. I was just I was afraid I'd lose my job because uh, I don't know they, uh, you know, we have to go through the same stuff that as airline pilots do. You know, psychological evaluations and stuff like that. And I was going, man, you know, if the guys I work with, right, you know, hear about me seeing aliens in my house, you know, uh-huh. I, I I drive a hazardous material crude oil transport truck, right. you know. It's, that's not the guy you want working for you. The guy who chases aliens around his house. <laughs> uh, I, I guess. I guess that would be just like having a criminal record, right? Yeah, it would. It, yeah, it would be like okay. uh, this guy's nuts or something, and I, we don't know if we want him in our truck mm-hmm. anymore. So, and, and that's kind of the way those guys are, really. Okay, so what happened after that? Now, apparently, you were visited by work at, at your place of work. Who visited you? Who were they? What, where did they come from? And what did they want? It was actually one year to the day that they invaded my house, mm-hmm. I, and I hadn't seen anything for a year. And I, I kind of thought, man, they're just done with me. I, yeah. man, I'll, as scary as it was, I'll never see anything like that again. And I, I was just at work doing my job at night, and it wasn't that late at night. It was about 10 o'clock at night, uh, or I think more closer to 9, I think. It, I mean, it wasn't that late in the night, and all of a sudden, I I, uh, I was driving up on this lease, and I seen, I seen some lights over amongst the behind the trees something that was sitting on the ground and the lights came on it and it took off and it went it looked like it was going to pass right over my truck and i was on the phone and i told my friend i said i got a ufo here i got to get a picture and i i was hanging out of the window up to my waist and mm-hmm. get my camera ready to take a picture and then the lights just blinked out just like it always does they just turn everything out or something man it just it just goes to dark and wow. you never hear anything or and and but they reappeared out over the field, and uh, they, they reappeared out over the field, and I thought, yeah, I know they didn't go away. They're still there. And for a solid hour, I was watching this thing move around, and at one point it sat on the ground, and I thought, I got to get a video of it, see if I could catch the. I could see something moving around. It looked like outside the craft, but it was in the distance, so I recorded it. I started recording this thing. It kind of leapfrogged like 100 yards and, and went down to the ground again. And then it shot up in the air, and it went about a mile in two seconds. And it was blinking yellow, red, and blue the whole time it did it. And then it just stopped a mile away in the air. Hmm. And I actually caught that on I caught that on video. I still have that on video. You can see it on my YouTube, Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel. Um, did anyone else... Uh see these sightings did was there any report that you were able to find in the newspapers or anywhere else that other people saw the the this strange craft and this on the same date and time that you did well i, I looked for for other people to see it because mm-hmm. there was a lot of activity going on that night it went on for a solid hour and like i said this this, this crap came back and then it approached me and it came right over my head and scared me and that's yeah. when i went in hiding and got some more pictures of it let me ask you at this time did you call the police this time no why not <laughs> no, i did not why not i i don't know it's just uh, i was just so caught up trying to get, catch up some footage of it cuz i'd been reporting this stuff to move on and they were challenging me to catch some video catch some pictures so i was intrigued by it and i was amazed by it and I just wanted to get some photographic evidence of it. So 
I I had a yeah I had a flip phone at the time, but you have to right. realize this is a Motorola Tundra in 2011. This was just about the best flip phone you could have, and at that time, not many phones had video capability. This one did. Right. So I'd spend some money to get a good phone to get some good pictures of what I got. And at that time, they're not not a great camera, but it was as good as it got back in 2011. Did you call any members of the media to report the story? Uh, I think that night, I think I filed a, a MUFON report, mm-hmm. and and then uh, I'd I'd filed many I'd filed so many MUFON reports. I finally I think just quit, man. I was like that. <laughs> but I got some pictures. I got some pictures of this thing. Anyway, and it, when, and it came up right over the top of the battery. I could see the edge of the disc. The disc started blocking out the stars over my head. And, and it scared me so bad, my knees started shaking, and I yeah. couldn't hardly move around. And I was walking around there, and I stopped the loading process, and I went and hid under the battery. And then it's, and I thought, man, it's, the battery could blow up because I just sucked oxygen into it. It's flammable as all get out. So I moved away from it in case it exploded. I watched the disc move right over my head. A huge compartment with a light inside it came on up underneath it. And from my hiding spot... I leaned around. It took every bit of courage I had to lean around the side of this thing, and ca- it took a picture of the, the the light compartment, and that's the compartment that has an alien in it, and it looks like a horn on its head. And and I found out later in 2017, this this alien that I caught in that compartment is the same one that came and visited me in my house here in Ranger, Texas. How did you find that out? Because I, when I when I got up and close and personal and seen her, and then I went back and looked at the picture, I could see the similarity. I could see the similarity in the creature in the picture and her. So in 217, you had a face-to-face with this E.T.? Yeah, with this same one. It looks exactly like the same female alien. Tell us about the the meeting. Uh, or, or no, what we're going to do is we're going to we're just going to wait a couple of minutes here because we are we're coming up to a commercial break, and I really don't want to interrupt you as you start telling us this story. Um, let our listeners know where they can. Uh, what's your What's your Facebook site again? Uh, you can go to the Ronnie Dawson Experience Center on Facebook. I have a, a, a book on Barnes & Noble called mm-hmm. the Ronnie Dawson UFO Story. Yeah. I just wanted to get it on paper. And uh, I have a YouTube channel called the Ronnie Dawson YouTube channel. It has like 1,260-something thousand views. And my most popular video is Man Escapes Alien Abduction. I think that one video has over 900,000 views. Uh, do you get paid for this on YouTube? Do you make money on it? At one point, yeah. I... I at one point, I made like two hundred dollars wow. just selling advertising, right. just selling advertising to people who wanted to advertise on my YouTube channel, and I was shocked. Really? <laughs> you eh? know? Well, I but, guess I guess you've got to recoup some money for the expensive cell phone somehow, you know, because you guys who right. do UFO investigating, you pay all the expenses out of your pockets. Yeah, yeah, it, it's certainly not a money making deal by no means. Right. I mean, I got two hundred dollars one time, and then it was like fifty, twenty dollars a month. Uh, I'm not getting anything now because you have to have. I don't like 50,000 views a month right. before you start getting a check. All right, Ronnie, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Next on Nation, Ronnie Dawson is our guest. www.facebook.com forward slash Ronnie dash Dawson dash experience. And we'll be back on the other side of this break. And don't forget, you can always go to Amazon and Barnes and Noble online and uh, get a copy of his book. I'm Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon. Don't go away. a skeptic or a believer join me rob mcconnell as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the exxon radio tv show on xzbn and the exxon tv channel on simul tv since 1990 the exxon radio tv show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard together we'll investigate ufos aliens ghost bigfoot Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. 
With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. Dawson is my special guest of this hour, Exonation, www.facebook.com forward slash Ronnie-Dawson-Experience. Uh, Ronnie, before we went to the break, we just started talking about a face-to-face experience that you had with the ET that you had witnessed earlier on, and the date and uh, the date of the, of the meet and greet between you two was sometime in 2017. Tell us what led up to that meeting, what happened at the meeting. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Uh, after after this thing approached me mm-hmm. and the lights came on up underneath it, this thing backed away. A military jet flew over the area, and then a mothership came in. I watched these lights circling above my head, getting lower, and and this thing. All of a sudden, this I thought, here comes another UFO. I'm going to get a picture of it, and this thing started coming out of the clouds, and it, yeah. and it almost got foggy, and this thing came in like a dart. It, it was like a big V shape started coming and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And this thing, it had to be a mile long V shaped craft. And I mean, it was solid rock on the bottom. You could see burn marks, you could see meteor craters, you could see impact marks. And this thing looked like a meteor for all practical purposes. And it passed right over my head, fairly low to the ground for something this size. And I could just see that it was solid rock on the mm-hmm. bottom. And then this thing started slowing down. I thought, for, I thought okay, it's not a meteor because it's slowing down. Meteors don't slow down. This thing slowed down. And the, the first part that had passed over me started tilting up. Now it's looking like a skyscraper rising up in the air. And then this thing shot off. And it shot off so quick that I couldn't even imagine something that big that that big can move that quick. I mean, you can see the air rushing to feel the vacuum that it created. You can see the steam and fog rolling off the surface of it as it took off. So when you're, you're saying the fog, it, uh, I remember watching... Um can't remember independence day when the ufos would come out of the out of the sky it would be, they'd be surrounded by cloud or or fog is that what it looked like that's exactly what it okay. looked like and i think it's because of the cold of space coming in and getting with the warm air of our atmosphere mm-hmm. it's the only the only thing i could think that right. would cause it so what happened uh, when did you meet the alien Okay, this okay, this thing, uh, yeah, like I said, it passed on my head. It, uh-huh. it went away, and it banked back towards me. And then I could see that there was a city on the surface of it. And, and this thing, it was, I thought, man, it's coming back. It scared me again, and I thought about dropping, my, dropping everything and running and hiding. And then it stopped, mm-hmm. and then it made a big half circle. And then it, it went from being something that huge to just a dot moving across the sky in about two seconds. Amazing. I mean, it's, it's the most amazing sight anyone could ever see. And I actually got some video footage of that, and it's also on my YouTube channel. About 15 seconds, I caught the left. At a, at a mile distance, it was still wider than the camera's field of vision. That's how big it was. I got the left side of How it. far were you away from it, Ronnie? It was one mile. When I, it was about a mile away from me, coming back at me when I, when I got the video rolling. All right, so let me, let me just understand this. It was V-shaped. 
It had rocks yep. on the bottom. Right. Uh, you could see meteor meteor hits and, and other, I, I would imagine, uh, scarring from its travels. Yeah, and on the top of it, it okay. looked like a weird-looking city with all sorts of lights, and you could see this blue neon power like look like line looking things rolling mm-hmm. roaming across the surface of it. Weird looking buildings. And you, and you a said tall it, tower with lights and there was a row of burning flares like like it, it was some kind of refining process going on. There so there was a lot of mix wow. of buildings and lights and stuff like that on the surface of and, it. And how big would you say this craft was? It was a mile away from you. So how how big would you say it was? It looked like it was a tight V. Each leg of the V would be about a half mile long. Mm. So I mean this thing you wouldn't have no problem seeing it if you had been there. Okay, I now, mean, this now, thing filled the sky. I now, had a, a UFO full of sky, and, and what scared me the worst mm-hmm. was holding my phone up to get a picture of this thing and looking at the black screen on it, the black display screen, right. going, my God, this is an opportunity of a lifetime, and I'm going to miss it completely. Uh-huh. And finally, I just give up on the display screen, and I pointed the eye of the camera at the thing, and I pushed record, and I prayed that I caught something. Now, and I did. Now, what part of the state of New of, uh, of Texas did this happen in? This is this was just outside Coleman, Texas, uh, uh, right off Highway 206, uh, near a little town, little farming community of Echo. Hmm. It's about a mile south of 206 is where this oil field battery was at, where all this took place. Is it strange that no one else saw this but you? And I was I was looking at some MUFON reports, and a lot of people had seen a similar looking craft in that area. So you know, I think other people have seen it, you know, down there other than me. But they're just like me; they they didn't have any pictures to prove it. It was just their word against. You know, I'd like to mm-hmm. MUFON won't tell me who these people are. You know, they'll they'll share what they shared, but they won't share with me. Tell who me they about were, tell so me about the experience that tell me about the experience you had with the extraterrestrial themselves. Uh, that happened in August 2017. I've been seeing some strange anomalies around my house and mm-hmm. I, I didn't really know what to think about it and one and, and I was coming to bed one night. My wife was fixing to come to bed and the, the bedroom light was on. I was laying in bed closing my eyes. Okay, hold on here, hold on here, hold on here, Uh, because before I asked you if anybody lived with you, you said no, now your wife is there. So was she there with you in the previous, uh, when when your house was ransacked? No, she wasn't there then, but in 2017 she was. Okay. Go ahead. And uh, and my wife was fixing to come to bed, and uh, and the light was coming on, she was giving the kids her marching order, Mm -hmm. and, and anyway, so... All of a sudden, I, I'm laying in bed, open my eyes, and there's this mist covering the whole bed. It's almost like, I mean, it's like a smoke. You can see through it. It's not so dense, that you, but you can definitely see. And I'm thinking somebody burnt something in the kitchen. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, i got to get up and see where all this is coming from. And I, I had my eyes wide open, and all this smoke all of a sudden just shot through the wall. I mean, it just took off and went right through the wall. And I thought, okay, this you know, I, I've been wondering for a while if E.T. was wandering around my house watching me, but I know now. There's no doubt that this this is some paranormal stuff here. No doubt. And and it was, it was it was just a few months after that. It was about August 2017. I was working nights. I come home, and and I was tired. I was asleep. And I remember I wasn't even dreaming. I was just completely out right. after working a long, hard night. And I was laying in bed, and I remember having also like a mini dream. It was like these two females had my arms, and they were pulling on me. And then I slipped out of their grasp, and automatically it's like I went back to sleep. And I and I, I remember kind of thinking to myself, man, that was a weird dream, you know. And then all of a sudden, it was it happened again. I was I was dreaming, and there's these two women. They had a hold of had a hold of my arms, and one of them said, help us. And I thought they were, like, pulling me out of a manhole or something, and they were pulling on me, pulling on me, and I was helping, trying to fight fight to get loose, like I was stuck in a hole or something like that. And finally they pulled me loose, and all of a sudden I popped out what I of what I thought was a hole, and I was standing there, and I was going, oh, thank you. And the first thing they do is start apologizing. We're sorry for interrupting your rest, you know. We're from another world, and we need to have a conversation with you. And and I'm thinking, oh, thank you, thank you, you know. And I'm like, no need, you know. And I and and I looked around and I realized I'm standing in my room. My body's still sleep. You know, somebody's sleeping in the bed. I'm not really sure it's me, but I'm thinking, okay, I'm standing beside my bed. Then I looked and I'm standing in my bed. I don't have any from the knees down. I don't have any legs. I'm actually standing in the bed. 
And then I look down and I think I kind of freak out because my legs are in the bed or, or I can't even see. It looks like I'm standing on my knees with no legs on the bed. Mm -hmm. And I, and I try to walk and then I kind of fall forward and I, and my hand goes out and I put it on my, ever who's sleeping in the bed. I wasn't sure at that point, but it's actually me sleeping on the bed. I reached out, put my hand out because I was falling. The two aliens grab my shoulders to try to help hold me up. And I remember my hand goes into my leg and I feel it rest on my bone in my leg for a second. And then all of a sudden it goes right through my bone. Like I broke my own leg. And then I could feel the softness of the, of the mattress underneath. Mm -hmm. and, and then I'm freaked out. So I pull my hand back. And these aliens are trying to help. They, they walk. I basically weighed it. I weighed out of my bed. And then all of a sudden, there's my legs. It's like my I had legs from the knee down, but I was submerged in this bed. And they walked me out of the bed. And then I realized that, okay, this is really weird. And I looked at the person sleeping in the bed. and realized it's me. And I looked around. And it's my bedroom. And, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking it's some women and my wife had got to play a joke or something like that. And then I, I got to looking at these these girls and and they are and I can see that like one one is very tall and athletic looking has very short black hair she has a big ruby thing stuck to her cheek I first thought it was a birthmark but after I got closer to her I could see that it was like a really elite really nice carved like ruby mm -hmm. that stuck to her cheek she had like a diamond in the center of her forehead she had like a tattoo on her cheek and the other one the other one was a little bit shorter and she's a lot more muscular and she had big hair. And then when I looked at her face, her, she was a very attractive woman. And then all of a sudden right down at the tip of her nose and her chin turned into like a cat's mouth. Oh. And, and I seen whiskers on her upper lip that mm -hmm. were like that, like they had trimmed. And it kind of reminded me of porcupine quills. And I, and I was like, Oh my goodness, man. Okay. These, they're not kidding me. They're not from here. This is real. This is really going on. And so I'm sitting there, and she and she said, "Look, you know, I said this is a rift between your your world and ours, and this is where the people of your world are going to meet the people of our world, and this is where we are going to meet. And it's safe for biological harm here. We're safe for physical violence here. And she said you could move through solid matter here. And and she had me hand she had me put my hand on the on the other female's face, and she said, okay, now just push. And I pushed, and I said, and my hands slowly started going into her head." And I could, I could feel the skin. I could feel the flesh on her face. I could feel her hair. And as I pushed, I could feel what felt like her skull. And then I pushed a little harder. And then I could feel like the brain matter inside her brain. Ronnie, we've got to and take our felt, break. Please stand felt, by. We'll continue this and wrap up this hour here in the Exxon with Ronnie Dawson on the other side of this break. Don't go away. If you are looking for a safe, zero-calorie, natural option to the harmful artificial sweeteners on the market today, Just Like Sugar is what you're looking for. Just Like Sugar is a wonderful natural alternative for those health-conscious people who choose a calorie-restricted diet with a great, pure, sweet flavor that tastes just like sugar. Just Like Sugar is a great natural option for people suffering from diabetes and may be useful in restricted diet programs where standard sugars are not allowed and does not cause a laxative effect of some other sweeteners. Just Like Sugar comprises a perfect blend of chicory root fiber, natural calcium, natural vitamin C, and Just Like Sugar sweetness comes from the natural flavors from the peel of the orange. Just Like Sugar is a natural alternative to harmful artificial sweeteners and will change the way that you believe all natural sweetener products taste. Just Like Sugar is available at your local Whole Foods markets, Wild Oats markets, Henry's, Sun Harvest, and many other fine natural food stores in the U.S., Canada, and worldwide. They are here, and they've been here for thousands of years, making their presence known in the shadows. They might be seen by a lonely motorist on a deserted road late at night, or by a frightened and confused husband in the bedroom he is sharing with his wife. But who are they? What do they want? Why are they here? Perhaps most concerning, has the government been aware of their presence all along? 
The new book by Ellie Marzulli, UFO Disclosure, The 70-Year Cover-Up Exposed, delves into the world of UFOs. Can full disclosure be soon? Order now and receive a free hour and 37-minute DVD on the UFO phenomenon, UFOs Are Real. Get both the book and the DVD, a $40 value, for only $19.99. To order your book and DVD today, go to lamarzuli.net. That's L-A-M-A-R-Z-U-L-L-I.net. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X-Zone, Sci-Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Memorable dynamic presentations are a not-so-secret weapon in the business world. Do you have a powerful message that must be shared, but you haven't found a way to deliver that message? Do you want to be known as a top public speaker who gets amazing results? Are you ready to create and deliver your powerful message? Thomas Hydes can help you create and deliver your speech to get the results you desire. Visit IconQuality.com. Did you expect your business to flourish, but instead it plateaued or didn't get off the ground yet? Would you like to achieve massive goals and discover new sources of income within your business? When you're ready to experience that type of success with fast results, Cindy Hendricks is the business coach for you. Her work with entrepreneurs and business owners has been life-changing. To get you and your business where you want to be, go to imaginemoresuccess.com. Has the fear of public speaking stalled your business or personal life? What would you give to develop and maintain supreme confidence? Have an invaluable private program to always perform at your best. Imagine how you would feel. You can have all that and so much more today with Thomas Hyde's life-changing course called Number One Fear Unleashed. Visit NumberOneFear.com and be liberated from your fear of public speaking. So Nation, Ronnie Dawson is our guest of this hour on Facebook. He can be found at facebook.com forward slash Ronnie dash Dawson dash experience. Uh, Ronnie, before we were left, we, we were just, uh, you were telling us about the face-to-face contact that you had with two alien entities in your bedroom at your home. And uh, they were giving you reasons or they were telling you that contact was going to happen. And what else do they, do they tell you, Ronnie? Well, you know, they told me that we had a, probably a forty-five minute conversation, mm-hmm. and uh, and they said they they had they had found our world because of nuclear testing had sent light and radiation into their parallel universe, and and during investigating it, because they said they had been at war and they had been attacked and and one of their planets was mm-hmm. badly damaged because of an interdimensional weapons and uh, and when our when our nuclear explosion sent light and radiation into it they investigated it, they came across us and they said that they were not the first they were not the only aliens uh, they are like a federation of many aliens right and uh, and they had been fired upon it and mm. they, and they warned me they said our nuclear test could set off their defensive countermeasures and it would be very bad for us why did they tell you I have no idea why they told me, and, I, and, I, and and actually, I told them that I'm not the person that they should tell. And what did they say? And uh, basically, what they said was that you know they will they're, they're going to have a 
said, you know, when, when they have open contact and they're mm-hmm. working on it, they said they're working out some bugs right now. They're working, working on it. And, and open contact's going to happen. And it's going to happen in this rift between the dimensions because, like they said, they had me put my hand on that just to show me that sure. you can't cause physical harm here because you can move through solid matter. And, uh, and the funny thing was, at that time, I was talking to these guys and my wife walked through the bedroom. Mm-hmm. Now, this is this is about nine o'clock in the morning. You realize, so she's she walked through the bedroom, and I'm sitting there with these two aliens, and I watch my wife walk right through the bedroom, on her way to the bathroom, and and I'm like, why didn't she stop? I was like, they said she can't hear or see us. They can't see it. Or they said we watch you guys. From, we watch you from here, and you cannot hear or see us from here. And I seen her, she walked back out of the bedroom, she mm-hmm. stopped, and she looked at us, and and one of them kind of freaked out and said to the other one, and she said, can she see us? And she goes, no, and she pointed, she said she's looking at him, and she pointed at my body sleeping in the bed, and then she continued on her way out. And and I asked her later, you know, why she did that, and she said it's because I have sleep apnea, and she just stops sometimes to make sure that I'm breathing. She sees my chest rise and fall, and she just... You know, she just makes sure I'm breathing. And that, and that was the reason she did it. I never knew she did that. But it kind of freaked the E.T. out because one of them that thought for the first second she could see us. But okay. she walked out of the room. All right. So let me let me just uh, see if I understand this. She, your, your wife walked into the room to go to the washroom. On the way back out of the washroom, she looks at you standing, talking to the two aliens. And the next day when you, or later on that day when you're, Awake, you asked her why she did that, and she said, well, she stops and looks at you while you're asleep because you've got sleep apnea, right? That's right, yes. So why would she look at you standing up if you were laying in bed? No, we were standing beside my body, uh, sleeping there in bed, and she looked at, she looked our direction. I mean, she did not look right at me. She, just, she was looking okay. our general direction. How, how do you know this just isn't a dream? You know... I, I asked myself because I didn't really want to say anything mm-hmm. unless I investigated that myself. Because right. you know, like, even with the UFO pictures and everything, I've catch a lot of flack from from the skeptics and doubters and and so called de- armchair debunkers. And 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 I was I was thinking myself, okay, I don't want to say anything unless I really you know know how am I going to know this is real? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, my wife was wearing the same clothes. Yeah, that she was. That I seen her go through. And she told me that she did go through there. She did stop. And then, and then I was sitting there thinking to myself, you're just running it through my head, and I thought, you know what? I have two pictures on the wall, and, and in one part of this, in one part of this encounter, I asked them to show me where they came from, and the, and they had me walk through the wall so I could see their world through this dimensional stargate or whatever, ever how they got here. They had they instructed me to walk through the wall, and I had to walk to this picture that's hanging on my wall, and and I remember going really slow because I was afraid the glass. I wasn't comfortable with moving through solid matter yet. And I was afraid the glass would cut my face. But when I was working that day at work, I was thinking, you know what? I don't think that picture has a glass in it. Mm-hmm. I think it's just like the picture on the other side of it, which is solid wood. It's just like paper on wood. There's not a glass there. So I, I came home excited because I remember when I walked through, through that picture, I remember the glass. And then I remember inside the wall, there was a stud inside the wall that passed through my right shoulder. And I remember I had to struggle harder to get through the stud in the wall than I mm-hmm. did the sheetrock. Right. It was harder to move through it when you're moving through solid matter. And, and then I, I came home, and I was anxious to see if there's actually glass in this picture or not. And when I, when I came and I looked at the picture, it did. The one on the side of it does not have the glass. This one has glass. I walked up to it. It, it hits my face right right in the middle of my face, right where I remember it hit me. I went and got a stud detector. I checked the wall right where my right shoulder would have went through the wall. There's a stud in the wall. So everything, there were several different things that helped confirm that this is a real deal. Plus the fact that I've seen them, plus the fact I've recorded them, plus the fact they've been in my house and I've seen them moving around and, and have photographic evidence of their being in my house watching me from there. But once again, I, I, I have to ask you this as a former police officer myself. How come you didn't call the police to make a report that somebody had been in your house? How come you didn't call any authorities when you saw this one and a half mile by one and a half mile by one and a half mile UFO? Something doesn't ring right here. Well, to me, I, I don't know. It's just that's the kind of stuff... 
you know, when you're in my business, man, I mean, uh, are you, I would never hear the end of it. Are you it's afraid not, of the police? No, finally, I've, I've came out and told everybody. At one point, I decided this is way too important to keep mm-hmm. to myself, and, and I came out and I told everybody. But no, I haven't went back and called the police and and. And I just, I don't think the police would do any good. You know, if if I if I if I thought if mm-hmm. I had one iota of a thought that that would help, would that would accomplish anything? I, I would have no problem with doing it. But I, I just, because I sit there and look at it, like try to look at it from a police officer. Well, you know, I have no physical evidence. I don't have the alien to prove that the alien was in my house. But still, somebody invaded your home. That's against the law. That is a police matter. Yeah, I, I wish I would have called the police that night, mm-hmm. uh, but I was just like, okay, uh, you know, I really don't know what to do. I really didn't didn't have anybody to talk to, didn't have anybody to believe me, and uh, and they're like, well, you could have just wrecked your own house and made up a story, you know. <laughs> it's just, and I'm like, do I really want to put myself through that? You know, I, I was thinking, well, you know, if I just keep going, I'm going to have some real solid proof at some point, and then I can come forth with it. So I've what, got some what photographic you, evidence. That's about as best as I've got so far. But even that photographic evidence isn't solid proof. Right, right. I, I've looked at what you sent us, and I I can't make heads or tails out of it. Yeah, it's. I mean, the the, the left half of the crap that's moving up there, you know. And mm-hmm. I've I've had a. It's a professor from the. Uh, St. Petersburg University down in Florida, he said, you know, I could believe you if you could look through the footage, you could find me a star field in the background of the UFO. And I took, actually took the time and did that. And I found the star field in the footage and I showed it to him. And he goes, yeah, he goes that, you know, he goes that, that thing was big. Was it? I said, yeah, I said, it was big, you know? So it's, it's not that the the proof isn't there. It's just a lot of people are just skeptical and they want to debunk you. And they put a lot of effort into trying to debunk you, but they won't, Hardly anybody's put any effort in it trying to help me prove it. Uh, has anybody from MUFON come down to do an investigation? Yes, uh, Teresa Turner is like the the director of Texas MUFON. Mm-hmm. I think she went actually to the Coleman, Texas site, and I, and I talked to her, and I showed her some of the pictures and stuff like that, and I told her the story, and we were at the exciting location. And uh, But like I said, the... I don't know. They invested. They did some of the invest. They didn't even see the creature standing in the. I mean, they they looked at the same footage I did, but they didn't zoom it in on it, and they didn't turn down the brightness not like I did. And when I t- zoomed in on it, I turned down the brightness. Then I saw the creature standing in the portal window underneath the UFO. You know, they never even found hmm. that part of it. You know, so why do you think it is that you saw it and the investigators didn't? Well, one of the things you have to realize back at that time is on the MUFON website, you, you can upload a picture to it, but mm-hmm. it had to be res- – the, the resolution and requirements at that time were so bad that you had to like – you had to take a bad picture and make it even worse, lower resolution, so it would be the si- fit their size format to upload to their reporting page. Gotcha. You know, That's where we were at back then. All right, uh, Ronnie, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight at Exxon Nation. If you'd like to get some more information on Ronnie and uh, take a look at these pictures, uh, facebook.com forward slash Ronnie-Dawson-Experience. I've got another explanation why the police weren't called, but that'll be for another show. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Crystal Beach, Ontario, Canada. And I'll be back on the other side of this news break at six and a half minutes past the top of the hour as we continue investigating the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and trying to get to the truth. But it's the people who are claiming the skeptics, the debunkers, the, what did he call them? armchair skeptics who are putting up a bigger smoke screen and making it hard for the truth to be found. And for goodness sake, if you're going to take pictures, make sure that people can see what you're saying is there. Because leaving everything to their imagination is not going to do you a bit of good. I'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. 